Life is long and weird, and the longer it is, the weirder it gets. You may have noticed that. But even by that unchanging standard, Gina Carano has had a pretty remarkable life packed into a relatively short amount of time. So in 2006, she began as a professional mixed martial arts fighter. Within a few years, she was starring in big Hollywood films like Fast and Furious. Then in 2019, not that long ago, she got one of the biggest roles for her career. She was on a Disney show called The Mandalorian. In case you didn't see it, here she is. Stay back, dropper. Easy. Drop your weapon. You're going to wish you never left Alderaan. I saw your planet destroyed. I was on the Death Star. Which one? <laughs> you think you're funny? Do you know how many millions were killed on those bases? Drop your blaster. As the galaxy cheered. Last chance. Destroying your planet was a small price to pay to rid the galaxy of terrorism. So back in 2019, when you worked at Disney, the Disney Corporation, you could expect a long and pretty stable career. It's a huge company, lots of things you could keep doing there at a pretty good salary. And the only cost would be you have to follow the rules. Disney at the time was getting increasingly political, and the people who worked there were expected to go along with this. So don't, don't say anything, and you'll be absolutely fine. But for some reason, she could not follow that rule. And so she went on Twitter and pushed back on some of the things that Disney was pushing. She questioned the motives of Black Lives Matter. If it's so great, why isn't it helping black people? She asked about the 2020 election. Was it really fair? And then she suggested that maybe vax mandates were not a good idea. So what do you think happened? Well, Disney fired her. What happened next to Gina Carano? It's an even more interesting story than the first part of her life. Uh, and so we're honored to have her join us on set now. Gina, thanks so much. Thank you, Tucker. It's so good to see it's, you. It's again. great to see you. So last we spoke, and I don't know because both of our lives have taken lots of turns since then. Yeah, <laughs> I can't remember how long it's been. Um, but you were just kind of emerging from the chaos of getting fired for things that in a normal country would not cause you to be fired, mm -hmm. um, like refusing to put in a pretty funny way your your uh, pronouns in your email, and they fired you. So. What happened now? Like, what are the twists that your life has taken since? Because I think it tells us a lot. Well, we um, went to the Daily Wire uh, after the cancellation. Um, Daily Wire in Nashville. Yes. And, and why'd you go there? What was your expectation? Because um, Ben Shapiro had given me the opportunity to, you know, um, kind of try to uncancel me. And yes. say, hey, we'll do a movie with you. Come on out and um, let's just do a movie and try to get you know, be uncanceled. Yes. And so I went out to Nashville thinking that we were going to shoot a movie there. We didn't shoot it there. We ended up shooting up in Montana, Prey, Montana. Um, what a great town that is. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I love Montana. Yeah. Um, and so we, we shot this $2 million Western movie during, like, you know, the time where SAG-AFTRA was starting to um, mandate the vaccines and COVID tests and masks. And, um, you know, I just said to the, the Daily Wire gave me the, op you know, the option, you know, we can either do a union movie or we can do a non-union movie. Um, what would be the difference? The difference would be, well, the difference would be we would have to basically um, hire more vaccinated people on the union movie just in case they did mandate it, which they ended up mandating it, um, which is obviously everything I was standing against. And so that wasn't an option for me. But um, it was an option for the Daily Wire. Um, it, it, it was one of their options. Yes. Yeah. And so then their second option was, well, for half the money, so we went from $4 million, um, you know, exciting serial killer movie to a $2 million um, non-union movie where that would have given, you know, so many more people that were struggling at the time for not taking the vax, for not wanting to apply by the COVID restrictions. And so the Daily Wire did put that on my, you know, my shoulders and said, you know, this is your decision. This is your movie. Um, and I chose to go up and shoot the $2 million Western, which was called Terror on the Prairie. So half the budget, but you felt that it was important as a matter of principle not to participate in a vax mandate. Yeah, I wasn't going to do that. I mean, you know, Disney uh, 
didn't uh, I mean I wasn't I didn't cave to Disney you know what I mean yeah. I'm not gonna like go to Nashville and be like okay uh, I was so grateful by the way for the opportunity you know that uh, they offered me um, but it just when I got there it was just two different options that I would I thought I, I didn't think that that was what I was showing up to um, but they they did you know um, they were like okay then let's let's go up and let's make this Western for two million dollars uh, it made it definitely a lot more difficult. Um, it's kind of funny online and on IMDb they say it's we shot it for seventy five million dollars and they're trying <laughs> they're trying to like write up all these reports that it went into theater and it only made eight hundred dollars and I'm like no, it actually was just s streamed on the Daily Wire. We made it for about two million dollars that I know of, you know, and it could have been less than that. Um, and we uh, it was never in theater. And you've got like all of the Hollywood, you know, press, like, look at, you know, and it's even not, not I believe it's still on IMDb listed as, as $75 million just to kind of like do these awful things to people like of course. me yeah. and the Daily Wire and like p people like you. It's like, let's just put as much false information of that course. leads people astray. Um, but it ended up being a really good film, um, Terror on the Prairie. I, I think there could have been, you know, adjustments made that made it better, but I'm, I love the performances in it. I love the people that made it. Um, Dallas Sonier is a wonderful producer. I loved working with him. And so I had a, you know, a really good time. So what'd you do after that? I <laughs> disappeared. I think, you know, I knew that, uh, after getting canceled and fired, I knew that, like, even during the daily, even during that Daily Wire kind of uh, terror on the prairie stint, I was wounded like a broken animal. And I, yeah, I'm not sure if you experienced the same thing after uh, what happened with you and Fox, but I, I think everybody handles it maybe differently. Like, yes. it, it, to me, it looks like you jumped straight back in and you were like, you know, hustling. I um, have maybe a different energy where it's like. You know, I got wounded. I got stabbed. Yes. You know, I'm very shallow, so it's easy to recover. No, stop. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I think you're just, you know, like a certain type of brain that, you know, you go forward, right? Yeah, have to. Um, and mine was, I, I've not been like that. Like when I've been wounded in yes. relationships or in life, like you know, I get, I, I get hurt. I'm sensitive. So, yes. for two years, I've been, you know in this, you know, kind of desert, you know, kind of, you know, like wondering, I'm like, oh God, <laughs> you know, I see justice happening and I see people moving forward and I'm not moving forward. Um, like I thought I was going to, and like I had, you know, said I was going to try to, and I felt very, um, just forgotten. And then, um, so when you, when you were fired from Disney for, reasons that no person should ever be fired resisting a vax mandate or not putting your totally insane pronouns in a in an email did did you consider suing them then yes yeah i actually uh, confronted my family lawyer and we talked about it and i was like you know if this isn't defamation or if this isn't discrimination then i don't know what is if this isn't wrongful doing of um an employee yes then i don't know what is so i now it's my fault uh for not telling your story more completely for those who don't know it it's not simply that they fired you right it's that they defamed you they i mean and harassed and discriminated and just uh, put me through the struggle session, which I didn't know when you're going through it, you don't know that, you know, you're like, I was so naive at 2020. I, have, yes. I haven't been living in the political realm at all. Yes. I just pay my taxes and, you know, hustle for that next job, you know, that next action job or that next drama job. And, you know, that's just what I've been trying to do for my entire life. Um, besides my fighting career yeah and so then it was just like when 2020 hit it's like the the shades got opened and i started actually like looking around thinking wait a second wait a second what's happening here like yeah. uh why are people allowed to riot on the streets and they're not allowed to go to church and why are big businesses staying open and small businesses are getting shut down and um you know it was just uh it bothered me it's like people forcing masks on each other and i i and and you know intrinsic intrinsically new lockdowns are going to be devastating to people this is you know 
coming from an, a person who has, you know, been on and off work, I know what it's like to not work for a year and yes. then work for three years and not to work. And when you take away that consistency, it does such an emotional, mental, spiritual thing on you that, um, you know, some people don't know how to handle, you know, they start drugs, alcohol, addiction, and that's exactly what we've seen. You know, we've seen all of this addiction and all this problem, um, you know, deaths. And I've lost two friends to overdoses, um, you know, one to turbo cancer. I've lost so I've lost so many people in the last six years or the last four years that it's just like mind blowing, which is just a whole another subject. But it, it does make me feel like um, I was I stood up for the right thing. I'm not sorry I did. It hasn't made things easy but um yeah i was uh so i did try to go and talk to a lawyer um, and what was the lawyer's response and what was your thinking about it at the time he, you know like i had to get out of la because my life was not safe there at least where i was at and you know it's pretty expensive to live in la and and so it's either like m move into keep keep in la or you know, try to move to maybe Nashville and see if that yes. the Daily Wire thing works out. Well, that didn't really, you know, pan out, which, you know, it's not like there's no bad blood there. It's just, it's not where I, you know, it's not where God wanted me, I don't think. Yes. Um, and so then I just kept on going and I ended up in Montana. <laughs> How did you wind up in Montana? We ended up shooting terror on the prairie there. And you liked it so much you stayed? I just being outside and looking at the sky and being able to breathe and not feeling that anxiety of a city or um, the possible riots coming down the streets and just, you know, there's an interesting thing I feel like in Montana, uh, you know, people mind their business basically yes, and keep to themselves and um, I feel like in Montana you have to work in your land, you have to be, have a certain toughness during the winter. And I think that's really cool. So, you know, Montana is not a place where weak people go to live. And I like to be surrounded by by that energy. By strong people. Yeah. And so when I, me and my lawyer were talking about it, my family lawyer, he's such a wonderful man. He was like, Gina, you know, I think it's important that you get somewhere safe and take care of that first. And so I did. And, and, and relocating your life as I'm sure you've been through plenty of times in your life is, you know, it's not like an easy thing, a changing a job, a changing of a life perspective, yeah. you know, and then having to completely uproot and move your life and figure out where you belong. Um, yeah, all of that has been going on in the last two years and a lot of positive things too. Um, I look at, you know, uh, relationships and friendships and future different um, you know, I could have ended up in New York and single at some point. And now I really value a partnership and I really value a future with someone. And it's just like my whole, maybe that's just called maturity, but I was a really late in <laughs> maturity part. <laughs> you were, my little sister you is were a busy. lot, <laughs> my little sister is a lot more mature than me and she's got three kids and she's like, any day, Gina, any day. <laughs> I'm like, well, look. You know, I don't know about the kids part, but did your spiritual perspective change? Oh, it I've always been a Christian, but I never felt so much like a Christian as I do these last few years. And it just keeps growing. And, um, you know, I, I think that's something that makes people cringe. And uh, I've seen that happen. But um, why does it make people cringe when you say that? Well, I think, you know, religion and any type of, you know, it's been used so wrongly, you know, some, it's been used so aggressively and wrongly to persuade people in evil, you know, ways that um, are fake. And um, it's, it's, it's really turned people off because usually when people go to God or go to a place of God, they're searching because they're hurt and they're wounded. And when you are hurt and wounded, and then you get hurt and wounded by the person, the, the people, or a, a place that you, you feel is supposed to protect yes. and be the safe place, I think then then people just get really um, angry at God. And I don't think that it's God that maybe they're angry at; it's at the experience, you know. Yeah. So the I, people claiming to represent Him. Yeah. So I really haven't been to church, an actual church, um, probably in twenty years. <laughs> yeah. Um. But I, in the last three years, have just grown so much closer 
and understanding. And so it was actually at that point where I said, you know, I was like, God, <laughs> you know, all these people are getting justice, you know, and I, I was so, I know I was done so wrong. It was so wrong what happened to me. And I know that there's so much more wrong that happened to so many other people. And so I even felt like, you know, like I, don't be a brat about this, you know, like there's, you know, doctors and lawyers and police officers and nurses. And, you know, this is like awful things are happening all around to everybody. And so I just, I started looking at my justice as, you know, starting over in Montana and being able to see the big sky and just being so grateful for my surroundings and then finally it was really interesting when i finally got that out of my heart and truly gave it over to god and was just like it's yours if i stay in the desert of work and i never work again in this business then okay then i need to learn a different skill <laughs> you know i need to figure out what i'm gonna do and so i had to really let it go genuinely you know genuinely let it go and which a, isn't easy and a week later well yeah that took years um i tried to i tried to pretend like i was there so many times but to genuinely let that last inch of like it's gonna be okay and i'm gonna give it to you and a week later i got an email a week later i got an email from x and they said that they um were some lawyers that um were taking up cases that people had possibly been fired um, for speaking their opinion on on X, and they'd like to hear my case. So they approached you mm -hmm. over email. Elon Musk's lawyers just found you. Yeah, I don't even and said. Know by the way, we'd like to pay for your your case. Yeah. Well, no, no, it didn't. It didn't go like that. It was. <laughs> I was first of all I was like is this a scam yeah it sounds like a scam <laughs> right and I was like some sort of scam so I like you know had my lawyers look into them to make sure uh, my family lawyer um no I've never paid a dime to and he has just you know he's actually my brother's or my, my sister's um husband's uh cousin <laughs> <laughs> and here he is just like taking on like my problems just with a smile and and i was like do you think you can you know will will lemko by the way i i love you will um he's been such a, a wonderful person to me he he was just like these people are legit these are actually legit lawyers get back to them and so i said because will will believes in my case he just knew my my personal circumstance was very difficult at the time and you know didn't have the money to pay for that. Yeah. Um, I needed to put that money into restarting life. Yes. And so um, uh, he's like, call them back. And so, or, or email them back. And I emailed them back immediately. And I was like, ready. And, and Ed, Edward Trent, who is um, at the law firm, just an incredible man. He was like, wow. <laughs> He was like, we've emailed a lot of people and you got it back to us like it's like pretty fast, you know. And um and then from there on in the last, you know, I guess it's been that was before Christmas and it was, you know, probably in November, I think. Um they've we've just been like I'm sending them everything and I'm telling them my story and we're having long conversations and they're listening to everything that happened and then um you know, I'm sending them emails that transpired between me and Disney and publicists and all the other people, and I'm sending them everything I've got. And um, they they took that to X and Elon and said, we believe in this case very much so, very much so. Um, and they presented it to X, and then X was like, you know, you have to, they had to get the permission from them. So I'm sure X has their lawyers looking through it because it's a completely different law firm. Yes, retained I, by X. Yes, so yeah. I'm sure X has their own people that are looking at it as well. Um, so there's multiple eyes on this. And then um, then they had to take it to Elon and you know brief him on it. And then you know they came back and they said, we're taking it on. Let's do this. We're going to write a complaint and we're going to file. Well, I mean, that's just an amazing story. Yeah. Hey, it's Tucker Carlson. Thanks a lot for watching that conversation with Gina Carano, who is a very cool person. You may have noticed that a lot of the e-commerce sites online are run by people who 
don't share your values, and may actually despise you. Creepy tech oligarchs, first and foremost, selling your data to the highest bidder, also selling you garbage from third world countries, not helping anyone but them. But there is an alternative. There's a marketplace trying to change the way this works. It's called Public Square. And it's got a new way of conducting e-commerce by connecting you with 80,000 small businesses who make things you can feel happy to buy. Not guilty at all. You're working for good, not evil. It's worth checking out. You can go to publicsquare.com slash Tucker. Um, I heard Elon say something or read uh, some statement where he said, well, you know, anyone who's free speech on X has been used against them. Right. Uh, can have our lawyers look at it, but what do you, I mean. And I re responded to that, which I, you know, I didn't think that anything would ever come of it, but he, he tweeted that out. Um, and I said, you know, in a quote tweet, I said, well, I think that, I think I qualify or something like that, smiley face. And um, nothing happened for months. And I was like, okay, well, you know, I didn't expect anything. So, and then when that happened and I got that email, it was like, it's one of those, there's been a couple of those calls in my life or a couple of those moments in my life that I've just been like, oh my gosh, like I get a chance right now. I get a fighting chance to clear my name, to let the world know what happened here to, you know, the, the world's a lot, got come a lot, uh, you know, a long ways in three years. A lot of information's come out. Yes. So... I mean, you shouldn't get fired for being ahead of the curve. <laughs> you know what I mean? I shouldn't have gotten fired for, you know, talking about lockdowns and masks and encouraging that. I was encouraging conversation. You know, I shouldn't have gotten fired for my so supposedly controversial tweets. They were not controversial. They were just they were just they were just having trouble with where I was coming from, I think. Um I it's 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 bewildering. Like it it's mind blowing what happened um to do you have any idea why i mean even very rich people rarely pay for lawyers for strangers on principle mm -hmm. i mean have you do you know why elon musk is doing this you know you know i've never even met him i've never even spoken to him i think he's retweeted me once um and he's doing this not only for me in this big case he's doing this for many other people and um i think there is just i think we're living in a time of such um such an incredible person that would be fighting for free speech on the biggest level i mean if we did not have what elon musk is doing right now so many of us would be in such deep trouble um nations would be in trouble and um I respect what he's doing and I I don't know why he's doing it. You know, I think that, you know, a lot of billionaires put their money into more selfish things and he's choosing to put his money into the defense of free speech and the defense of injustice. And um I have to imagine, you know, I have to imagine that I had to do something with N N N Musk, his mother. Um because I follow her too and I think you know, how heartbreaking it, it, it's been for my family to watch me go through this hardship. And I really wonder about the Musk family um, and that what tough skin they must have had. But what an incredibly classy woman that that woman is. And I I love following her because I see this came from somewhere, <laughs> you know, um, and and. Yeah, I just think what an incredible family that has burdened such a um, such a tough moment in time that I think that he will go down in history as one of the greats, um, and as will you, Tucker. Well, I'm not. I'm, I'm not doing anything like that. I'm just talking on no, camera. That's no, the that's world... a pretty generous thing to be doing for people you don't know. I mean, never pretty... even spoken to him. So tell I us hope I get to thank him one day, <laughs> like and shake his hand, and you know, I don't know, like how you 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 thank someone like this, you know, like just a <laughs> thank you, Elon, for fighting this fight for so many of us. Um, it it is uns, it's just, I don't know anybody like this person, and I don't even know this person. Amazing. So what what's the suit like? And it goes without saying that. We're fervently rooting for you and for justice in this case, but tell us about the suit. 
Well, my lawyers, yeah. Um, they said, you know, keep the lawyer talk to the lawyer talk, right? Yeah. So I don't stick myself in any bad situation. Um, so I kind of leave that up to them. It's all on the complaint. They filed the complaint. Um, it's uh, February 6th. And Disney now has a certain amount of time to respond to that complaint. Yes. And so, um, yeah, that's... But basically, the substance, as I understand it, mm -hmm. you fired unfairly in violation of the law and then defamed. Tell us about the defamation. Tell us what they did to you in more specific terms. Well, there is defamation. I'm not sure... And if that's a legal claim, I mean, I, I should, yeah. I should as well as a non-lawyer keep, <laughs> keep the. But they, they trashed you. They did, they did. They what, uh, what they really did was they put out this um, awful. So I put up a tweet that I this become infamous tweet of saying that, uh, and I don't even know because I just put it up in like a story section. I didn't post it. I put it in like the you know quick, everybody look through like the stories of the tweet because tweets used to have the fleet section, and it was basically saying that it didn't start like uh, you know Nazi Germany didn't start just with people just waking up being Nazis and like you know right. demonizing you know like throwing people Jews into the concentration camps. It didn't start there. It started before that. It started with propaganda. It started with you know. Um, you know, you had to kind of start urging people to make it okay to um, demonize your neighbor and to yes. hate people for whatever differences it was. At that time, it was Jewish people. And, um, you know, that's where it started. And that's, that's what made it so much easier for, you know, you're living in a house and then, you know, the Nazis come and they're Next, your next door neighbor is getting hauled off that, you know, maybe years before you guys were all having dinner and having this wonderful yes. relationship. And then um, it gradually happened. It just wasn't something that happened just like that. And right. that was what the meme meant to me was that I was trying to tell people now, like, don't demonize each other. Understand, you know, we're, we're all human beings still. And, and, you know, Basically, just bad things have happened in the past and to learn from the past. Yes. And I thought that was something that everyone, uh, Democrats, Republicans, independents, that everybody could uh, um, understand and get. I thought that was a tweet for everybody. And the um, the Hollywood press and every you know major news and media that they came against me and they said she just she compared Republicans to the Jewish the Jewish Holocaust and um she's denigrating you know the Jewish community and like <laughs> wait so so you you came out against the Nazis <laughs> but they claimed you were pro-Nazis they called me they smeared me as an anti-Semite smeared me and I was like wait I don't and I still don't get how how did you do that right um and why did people believe in it but you know like uh, and then what Disney did was they put out a statement that said, um, uh, we are no longer working with, uh, it, there's, there is a statement, uh, we're, we're no, we're no longer working with Gina Carano, um, and we basically think that she's denigrating people off of their cultural and religious beliefs. And she, they, they said something about, about me being abhorrent and- For I, your anti-Nazi tweet. Yeah. So for, yeah, you obviously being, know right. this since you worked in the business, but I mean, people who write about television and movies are directed to the word by the PR departments at the television and movie companies. Right. So there's no independent press that writes about the movies or about television. Right. Even cable news. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like the big cable news websites are all controlled by the PR departments. Right. It's true in Hollywood. And that's really been... Um, you know, so I had my own, um, had hired my own publicist during, you know, uh, season two of The Mandalorian. And they were working with the publicists from the Disney people. And then they were working with the UTA who dropped me immediately as oh, well. Of course they do. Uh huh. Yeah. And then um, your agent who's there fighting for you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All of them. I mean, and then Other the entertainment stuff. lawyer yeah. dropped me. Of course. And that the, the, the funny thing is, like, the entertainment lawyer, I think, was. 
was uh, he, they would constantly be sending out, hey, we're having this Democrat, you know, um, at my house, come on over for, you know, raise some funds for the Democrat, you know, party, da, 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 or whoever the candidate was that they were, you know. And so all of these people just dropped me immediately. And I was like, people you'd been paying to stand by your side in case there was a big problem. Yeah. The second there was a big problem, they fled and denounced you. Yes immediately may they all rot <laughs> and, and i was just like okay that's so much you know i mean i knew that like maybe something could happen where disney would might be like hey you know um as professionals i thought maybe they'd just be like, okay well maybe we're gonna not work with you or maybe something like that could happen by speaking out um, about the things that I spoke out about. But I found the things that I spoke out about were so much more important than the the career part because I felt like, you know, we needed to be talking about, we're headed in a really bad direction. Oh, yes. You know, the lockdowns, the mask mandates, the vaccines, you know, I felt like we needed to, um, I never even said who I was really voting for. It was just, I was getting really pushed into this, like, you're an extremist, you're an all right extremist, you know? Um, and so I thought maybe that that could be an option, but never in my wildest dreams would I thought that they would have through Twitter or through um, a publication without even calling me. This is how I found out I was fired online on Twitter. <laughs> like they didn't call me. They didn't say we're letting you go. We're not, we're no longer going to work together. Um, this is why, you know, it was just, um, she's denigrating people off of cultural and religious beliefs and she's abhorrent. And I was like, <laughs> for coming out against the Nazis. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So backwards. Yeah. And, but again, you know that when you get attacked in the Hollywood trade press, that's because the company you worked for directed those reporters to attack. Right, and I am learning that more and more. So now, yeah. you know, when there's like a, a piece uh, that somebody writes about me, um, I go and I look up the journalist, yeah. and then I go and look up what other, you know, what, I, what other, you know, articles has this journalist written? Of course. And you can almost just trace it back. And a couple I, tra I traced right back to Lucasfilm. And I was of like, course. you know, right there, you guys, you know, you call up your people and, uh, you know, it's ugly. It's, well, it's the ugly. most dishonest thing ever. Yeah. And the, a reporter at the Hollywood Reporter or wherever. Yeah. Is, and it, and it's all involved, right? It's the agencies. It's the managers. It's yeah. the um, publicists. It's the studios. And it's just this big mafioso that um, does not give the independent artist unless they're willing to comply and fit in 100% into that um, ideologies and their narratives and be basically these manufactured robots, you know? Um, I mean, I feel like there's the 1% of Hollywood that can do what they want and say and think what they want. And those are the very, very talented people. Um, but at the peak of my career, it was like, you know, I think they thought, let's make an example out of this one. For sure. Um, she's an action actress, you know, she hasn't done, you know, drama yet. She hasn't gotten there. Um, We'll make an example out of her. And uh, it had the complete opposite effect, which was um, just overwhelming support. Um, uh, <laughs> it was pretty funny. Like, as soon as they, they were at the peak of their um, stock market ever uh, in February 2021. Or no, yeah, in February 2021. And right when they fired me is when it started plummeting to what it is now and you know they're you're obviously very smart people and they're trying to salvage it but um people saw they saw what was going on in my case it was very obvious do you have friends who are still there yeah i you know everybody i worked physically with um i never had a problem with and uh you know like um you know me and Pedro, we connected after um you know, Carl Weathers passed away. Yes. Um, and, you know, there was all these lies and all these weird stories in, that people make up in their heads. And, you know, one thing I can say is, you know, I adore Pedro. Um, and he said one thing to me. He said, you and Carl were protectors. And, and 
that means so much to me that he remembers me and our time together as me being a protector. And um, it's important, like, like people don't know what the real story is. Like, why do you think Pedro's calling me a protector? To his fans, I want, I, I, you know, there's a reason and there's stories that you don't know that happened. And I was there and I, and I protect people, you know, like, uh, there was a person multiple times. That's just my nature is when, you know, there was a person who was wearing a mask on set and they were at their end. They're overtime and they're uh, crying and they were upset and they couldn't do it anymore. They just couldn't. They were broken. There was a broken person in that mask and I, nobody was saying anything. And I just simply went up to the director at the time and I said, this person's done. They're done. They need that. They're, they need their, um, they need the contacts out. They need the, the, the thing off their head. They need to breathe. They're broken. And, um, the director, uh, and I was like, look, I, you know, I, and I worked long, longer hours than maybe probably any actor because my face was showing and I did all my own stunts. So if you go back and you look at like the work records, you're going to find who was on set the most as like the actors. And you're going to find me at the top of that list. And I said, I'll, you know, get my coverage tonight. I know you guys wanted to do it, you know, the next day. You can get my coverage tonight. You give this man a break and I will, um, you know, I'll stay later and, you know, push my time and um, I'll show up early and, you know, don't worry about it. But I've done that on numerous sets and that's, um, you know, cause I do understand that like, well, I come from a fighter's background and, um, and I want it and I wanted it so bad that I feel like I can, I ha if I can have the energy to push it and I can do it. And it crushes me when people are broken or hurting or being bullied. Yes. And which was my whole purpose of speaking out, um, you know, in 2020 was just... Well, the weakest got bullied the most, as always. They, a lot of people that, you know, I was usually very introverted. I, you know, <laughs> get really nervous for interviews, although that's getting better. Um, I get nervous for public speaking. I get nervous for performing. Um, but when I'm passionate and when I mean something, that's when I can speak. And that's the only reason why I'm probably able to speak with you right now is because I have a clear heart about what happened. I want the lawyers to look into it. I want the professionals to see what happened and how ludicrous and absurd it was. And um, and I want things to change so that it doesn't happen to other people. What's your next chapter? <sighs> well, my next chapter is gonna be, I'm gonna make a movie. I'm gonna produce and possibly direct it. I am going to do it. I'm going to get it financed. I don't know how yet. Um, but I'm going to make some art. And it's going to be truly inclusive. And um, I think that's going to be a gift. That That's that's where my heart has been. I thought I was going to get that a couple years ago with The Daily Wire. I thought that was the path that was going to happen. But I'm, you know, I think God's teaching me a lesson right now of how to... Um, how to do this, how to learn how to put this together and how to attract the people that you want to work with. And, um, you know, I, I, I lost my team when I got canceled, you know, so I didn't have anybody. And so the rebuilding of a life and everything has been my focus in the last two years. Well, I've, I've rebuilt that now. And, you know, there's still things that I need to, you know, do. I need to rebuild my body, you know, a lot of stress and not working and, you know, depression and all of that. I need to focus on my health. That's very, that's at the top of my list. And I've been saying that, but um, also to get creative. And uh, I think that's what's going to happen. I think that's what I want to do is I want to direct and produce a movie and um, start being more in control of giving getting my stories out there that I that I like I think being in control is a good thing at this point yeah <laughs> well I hope you'll come back when you do that thank you thank you thank you so much Tucker was, it's just a great story <laughs> and I'm glad to see you thriving Gina Crona thank you thank you 
Free speech is bigger than any one person or any one organization. Societies are defined by what they will not permit. What we're watching is the total inversion of virtue. Hey, it's Tucker Carlson. The internet is crowded with interesting things that don't really matter. On TCN, we attempt to bring you interesting things that actually do matter, and a lot of them. Interviews, long form and short, videos, documentaries. You can find all of it on TuckerCarlson.com, and we hope you will.